Thank you. Okay. Um, hey, first, uh, thanks for, for showing up at this. This is really great. Your guys' district is really big and diverse um, and encompasses large agricultural tracts, including uh, fields that are leased very cheaply by the state to uh, chemical giants Monsanto, now known as Bayer, uh, Syngenta, which is now the Hartung brothers, DuPont and Syngenta, which are now both known as Corteva, uh, who are manufacturer of the pesticide Chlorpyrifos, which was banned by the Hawaii's legislature uh, recently. In fact, the permitted use of that uh, pesticide runs out at the end of this year. Um, my question is, what is the fate of these multinational corporations in your vision of your district's future? All right, Makua, you're the first one to take this question. I thought you said, Matt, he was speaking. He was on oh. mute, but I'll... Uh, yeah, it, I'm sorry. Were you it's, giving an answer, Matt? You were, right? But you're on mute. You want me to go no, first? It's I can McCoy, go first, no you're problem. The second okay. one. McCoy, sorry, thank you. Okay, no problem. So the question was about Monsanto and that. I um I really stood on the front lines um for this issue. Um you can see back um when we've had those marches through Holly Eva, you know, uh, really understanding why gly glyphosate is still on the shelves at ACE, running into our oceans, and people really you know don't understand our agricultural. Um, how our agriculture was set up. It was set up by the people who overthrew Hawaii for a profit. And it wasn't set up to help Hawaiians by any means. They brought in, you know, foreign workers, which really became part of our fabric and helped building Hawaii. But the thing is with these companies is they really don't care about life in general, I would say, especially if they're up on the hill and everything washes down. Wailua's had some of the highest birth rate defect rates in the state just from the pineapple days. And I really think we need to go back to the Ahupua, a more sustainable um, agricultural systems. And really, I don't think these place, these companies have a place in, my, in our district, should I be here. I'm gonna do everything that I can to switch over to the organic corns because I, I understand how important feed meals and really subsidizing our agriculture by helping grow feed for our agriculture that we wanna develop. And I really think we need to go back to looking at how we can use agriculture to re rehabilitate the land because right now those lands are very poisonous. A lot of that black plastic and all of that um, soil under there is pretty toxic. The groundwater is poisoned from it. We need to do our best to rehabilitate, regenerate and really get local farmers farming for local people. Thank you very much, Makua. All right, Matt, your answer, please. Okay. And mahalo Doug, for the question, uh, especially right now, um, you know, I think it's vitally important as we look towards where our economy is going that we support local agriculture uh, and just seeing the impacts of big ag, um, you know, even in Waikalia, for example, just given its history, um, our soil right now uh, is not the best um, and it's hard to grow certain, you know, certain items over there because of that. Uh, and I think that as a city, right, it's how does the city you know, play a part in that bigger framework that we know the state's playing a part in, that the feds are playing a part in. I think first, um, the council has to be proactive in preventing the rezoning of agricultural lands into commercial or business or whatnot, right? Um, so we can maintain that land for use. And then we have to look, how can the city support uh, local farmers, right? Because we know that's where we want to go. We want to be incentivizing local jobs for local families. And, you know, I know the city just released a good food, food program. Um, I think it's about a week ago now. I think the city can be investing in small ag ranching activities that, uh, you know, aren't uh, running afoul of the state regulations or the regulatory framework regarding pesticides uh, and actually producing what we need. We saw during COVID, right, the impact of when our economy shut down. So I didn't know if I missed the timer, but, and it just kind of rippled out, right? And our local farmers didn't have access to, you know, our tourism economy. And so, you know, they weren't selling their goods to the hotels and they really took a huge hit. So the more we can integrate, you know, locally manufactured products, locally grown food 
into our economy, right? At a wider scale, so all of us have access to it, so schools have access to it. We can actually create a sustainable agricultural economy um, to supplement and work alongside all the other industries that we want to invest in. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Makua, do you want to add anything? Excuse me, go ahead. Sorry, it was a little bit of muffled. Yes, you have spoke. one minute if you want to add anything, enhance your response. I just really know that, um, you know, Monsanto and those folks, they grow a lot. You know, it's one thing why people are uh, there around, but there's better ways to do these practices. We don't have to use these toxic chemicals because what comes from upstream goes downstream. And it's a really big, um, it's, it's detrimental to our environment, the reefs, the coral, the fishes. I dive, you know, I eat from this ocean, the cigatera that comes from you know, even uh, golf courses, all those pesticides and chemicals are made. They're not only used there. They're used all over the island for all kinds of different things. They're really doing a lot of harm to our environment. You guys talk about climate change. Some of those pesticides and chemicals, the manufacturing and the use of them just globally is really um, adding to that right now. So I really think we need to work on more sustainable uh, practices. Thank you, Makua. All right, Matt, do you want to add anything? I'll just add two quick things. Um, you know, one of the, the programs that I'm working on right now at uh, Community Services, where I work as a planner, uh, is a Kupuna food program, right? We gave our Elder Affairs Division uh, funds, uh, HUD funds, HUD federal money to provide food access to um, Kupuna in the community. I mean, a part of that is also equipping them and setting them up to sign up for the different programs available. Uh, and I think just wanted to highlight one of the examples from the, the pandemic we did when we did those massive food distributions, um, we were able to, the city was able to partner right with local ag to get some of that produce directly to our community. And so I think that's just a great example of how the city should be more proactive, right? In the conversation, even though a lot of it is state issues, a lot of the regulations are state, um, we can still as elected officials at the city, give our opinion, go testify, uh, and also just support policies at that level to help you know uplift the community. 